Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong. We have a lure experiment. We're doing another color test. We're gonna have white. This is Slam Shady versus pink. So white versus pink. I've actually never been a, a really big uh, fan of pink before, but I know a lot of people are. A lot of our members are buying these. This is called Fred. And, uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and, let's go ahead and put it to a test. So I'm gonna do three casts with one, three casts with the other. We're on the same rod, same reel. I, I did just have a slightly different color line to, to make sure that I could see what I was using, but same leader. And we're gonna do three casts, three casts. We're gonna fish these mangroves. We also have an oyster bar further out there. So we're gonna be putting these in front of some redfish, some sea trout, some snook, possibly some flounder as well. And we're gonna see which color gets the most strikes. We'll keep you posted. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with Slam Shady. And we'll just be pitching these mangroves. This time of the year, it's pretty hot. So a lot of fish are uh, coming up in the shallows and seeking the shade. And so we're going to be getting the lures right there as close as we can to them. They're rigged weedless on the helix hook. And do this long enough, it's hard to not catch at least something. So that was second cast. I'm basically looking for any kind of little crevice like we just have right over there. Points are always good. We're coming up to a point, so we'll get a couple casts on it. There we go. First fish. It's like a little snook. It's hit right up against that shoreline there. And this one is on, this one's on the uh, Slam Shady. So not a big one, but we're on the board. That was the second cast, so I got one more before I switch. And first fish of the experiment. So Slam Shady one. Red nothing, making us work for him today. Ooh, that was a big fish. Just spooked off something. It's probably a nice red. Just the line going over it spooked it. That is not a good sign. So right now we're in this zone. We have a lot of life. It's just flat calm. We're in the wind protected side and these fish are just so spooky. Even on a long cast, I'm seeing if the, if the lure lands within five, six feet of a red, I can see it, I can see it uh, shoot off. So we might have to go move, but it's hard to leave all this bait. But uh, pretty soon, if we don't get anything, and this is the last round for the, uh, the Fred, if we don't get anything this round, we're gonna go ahead and move and we're gonna go to an area with some, uh, some more wind exposure. And oh, there we go, nice fish. Nice fish, this is probably a red here. Oh, maybe a snook. Let me go and uh, put the power pole down so we can hold this spot. So we got, oh yeah, another snook. Yeah, we got, uh, oh, Joel camera guy's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, to this oyster bar. with just uh, a little bit of wind ripple. That's all it took. And what do you know, slam shady again. So second snook, seems like the snook so far are preferring slam shady. All right. Again, not a, not a big guy, but at least get some action. So I just fished the edge of the oyster bar. Now I'm, I'm gonna buzz over the top. So it's probably about eight to 10 inches on top of this bar and on the sides, it's more like probably three, like two and a half, three feet. And so, yeah, with these paddle tails and the fact that it's weedless, I can buzz over this bar with a, with a really low risk of getting snagged. And sometimes those fish will push up on the top. Most of the time, again, the fact that it's, it's about under a foot deep on the, on the top, most of the time they'll be on the edges. We're gonna go ahead and I see there's just a lot of mullet up top now. So I'm casting up over it and I'm holding my rod up as high as I can. I wanna keep that, that lure with the high, just a high uh, retrieve into the water column. Not get down too deep. And now that I'm getting off the oyster bar, I put my rod tip down and that'll just, that basically controls, you know, you can't make a huge impact on the depth, but it's about a, probably six to eight inch depth control as far as rod tip up versus rod tip down. All else being equal. Three casts with the Fred in that, what should have been a trout zone. 
no strikes. Let's put the Slam Shady right back in there. That'll be interesting if they hit this. Usually trout aren't very picky. Oh, there we are, got them. So the second cast in there with the Slam Shady, I think we've got our trout. Might as well power pull down in case we get in the little pocket of fish. So, yep, yeah, little trout. So, Slam Shady's off to a good lead there. Three nothing. Still not enough, you know, to say one way or the other. We've only been out here for about 30 minutes. All right, whoop, so there's a little fella. Slam Shady, so far so good. Three nothing with the two different species. We have one more cast and then we're gonna make a switch. But in many cases, when there's trout that size, there's, there's usually more. So we're gonna cast in that same general area. Sorry, we have the sun going right, in the, or cast going right in the sun. But uh, we should be able to get some fish. And what I, since we have about maybe two and a half feet of water, it's a little bit deep for these weighted hooks. So I'm just doing rod tip down retrieve, just trying to get this thing as low as I can. And we'll sit here and just fan cast this area, see if we can pick off some more. Oh, where's that hit? Got him. Oh, I just got off. So I just had one on Fred. Get another cast out there, see if we can get revenge. First hit for the Fred. All right, so no more trout here. They've been finicky at this spot. So I'm gonna go to an area that has a lot more trout. We have the sun getting up a little bit higher. Uh, the snook and reds are gonna be tough. So we'll go to a trout spot and we should be able to get some higher quantities and see if this, uh, if this color continues to outperform the fret. So we'll go ahead and move and we'll see you at the next spot. All right, oh, I just lost them. So on the way out, I was like, I might as well try this point here and just hooked a snook on the fret. We'll go ahead and count that. I saw it, we hooked it. But uh, yeah, skipped under this mangrove point and the fret is now on the board. We'll go ahead and, and count it. Um, and I was, it was, the snook was right under the mangroves on this point here. So that was the second cast with it. We've got one more. And then I'll throw a slam shady up in there, see if we can pull another one out. Be glad to see the fret on the board. All right, so pulling up to this next spot, and here we can get a little bit of everything. There's trout on the outside, and when we get up closer to the mangroves, we'll have a good shot at some some reds and snook. And same thing, we'll just go ahead and do the, the three casts and, uh, and just see if we can get some, some more quantities of fish to, to get some good data. So the final spot, make sure to stick at the end, the final, the final zone we fish should have a lot of trout and that's when we'll get, we should get a lot higher quantity of fish. And I'll actually convert these lures into a jerk shad as well. For the deeper water for trout, it really works well. Oh no, we have a dolphin wrecking, wrecking house over there, right where I wanted to fish. That's not gonna help our chances. That's exactly what I was hoping would not happen. Uh, oh, it's going to town. It, oh my gosh, he had film over there, that's insane. Oh, I might have just got it. Yeah, I just got whatever I was going after. Ah, oh, bummer. Bird just dove over there too, Osprey. We're in the zone, there's, a, there's life here. And we're right in between the tides, so we don't have really good current flow. But uh, you know, go when you can go, you don't have to have perfect, perfect uh, current. There's always some fish to be caught. All right, so we're getting close to this point. Th that dolphin was feeding right out here in this, on this flat. And so many, ca many cases that'll push the fish up shallower, or not shallower, but really toward the structure. And this is a real shallow flat. But if they're here, they'll be right up close to those mangroves. So we're just gonna fish this zone and just try it for five minutes or so. And if it doesn't work, we'll go out to the trout spot. Oh, oh man, there was a cast. I actually cast a little bit too far and got in a mangrove. And the fact that these can be rigged weedless, I just tapped it out. It dropped right by the shoreline and I had a strike. That was probably a snook. Let's see if we're still weedless and we'll make another cast up in there. Well, that should do it. That's up there close to the trees. Oh, the dolphin's coming back. I just heard him. Oh no, he's right there. All right, I'll give Fred, we started with Slam Shady, so we'll give Fred a, a few casts. And we might have to change the plans with this dolphin. 
All right, so time to pack up. We'll move. We'll go to this trout spot. This dolphin, uh, it had, it was here first. So uh, fair, fair, uh, fair trade off. We'll go catch some trout. Let the dolphin have its time on this flat, and we're gonna convert these lures to a jerk bait. All right, so as I mentioned, we're now at a trout spot, and this is deeper water. Trout usually like deeper grass flats. When I say deeper, we're now in about three to four feet of water. That's really too deep for weighted hooks when you're using paddle tails. But one trick, if you don't want to re-rig or retie is we're gonna tear off the tails and turn these paddle tails into a jerk bait. So now we, we lost the, you know, that paddle tail. There's, it, it, it travels through the water quicker with less resistance and trout absolutely love it. And so we call these paddle tail nubs, but again, they're, they're essentially jerk baits. They, this, uh, this lure was designed to, to work as both a paddle tail and a jerk bait, just in case the tails get bitten off. Uh, again, situations like this, I purposely pull them off and now we're gonna go out and just, and just have this little darting lure dart through the seagrass and it should drive the trout crazy. Again, we'll do three casts, three casts. Let's see if they like the pink or the white. All right, so first cast and we are gonna start with Fred and we're right on the, just the outside edge of this flat. And again, this is usually where trout, where trout will hang and they just love, so I'm just doing a maraud tip down to get, get it down as far as possible and just doing some nice little, nice little twitches. So this lure is, every time I twitch it, it, it darts about eight, nine inches. And when I twitch it multiple times, it'll just dart and kind of a, just looks like an injured bait fish. And again, usually drives the trout crazy. If they're here, they're, they're gonna hit it. There we are. <laughs> oh, just got off. First cast had a trout on. So same thing. Just keep an eye on this, on this edge of the flat and then just, just darten this lure right down the edge of it. Oh, just missed, missed a bump. So for whatever reason, trout just love, and actually redfish and snook, there we are, there we are. Trout and snook just love that darty motion. Let's see what we have here. It's actually, I don't know what this is. Oh, Jack, whoa, bird's on it, bird's on it. Whoa, watch out, watch out, watch out. So, Apparently jacks like the darty motion as well. So now we have a new species on the board. And one cool thing about this nub style, without the tail, it actually casts a little bit further. There's less wind resistance as well. And same with even skipping under mangroves, it has a nice skip. This is something that isn't used often enough, is using these, these mulligans as, as a jerk bait. There we are, oh man, just missed another one. There we are, got him. This might be another jack. Woohoo! So this is the third cast with the the slam shady nub. Oh, this is a bluefish. <laughs> We're getting all sorts of species today. Yeah, we don't have these very common in Tampa Bay either. So yeah, this nub again. This is literally just six casts. We've been fishing for about an hour, hour and a half. We caught four fish with the regular paddle tails. You know, the mulligan has a paddle tail. And now we're six casts into the nub and we have two fish. These things are tough too. Yeah, lure came off, so we wanna make sure we don't leave those out in the water. Now let's get this bluefish. Solid bluefish. Yeah, these things fight so hard. There we are, whoa, that bird was coming up after it. <laughs> it's a solid bluefish there. Weighted hook right in the corner, hooked perfectly. These things have teeth, so be careful with them. Solid fish. All right, so just released that blue fish. We're ready to rock. Now it's Fred's turn. And so this is really just cast number four for the Fred. And same thing, right? Deep water, it's jerking this over this grass flat. Dolphin just buzzed by, but there should be a lot of trout out here, so that should help us still catch fish. Oh, I missed him. No, nope, I think he's still on. Yep, still on. Little guy, little trout. Trout, that was the fifth cast on the Fred Jerk. Or I should say the Fred Mulligan nub, which is used as a jerk. Little trout. Oh man, almost tied things up. 
that was this is the last cast with the mulligan yeah so no luck there so let yeah check out before we close here check out how this thing looks in the water so we have again jerk style oh watch out for that bird so it has just nice darts in the water it's just excellent excellent uh, motion so it just darts in and out of the grass it's super weedless and when rigged with these hoss helix hooks this is the perfect combination you can have either the you know for better hookups you can have the hook just flush on the top if you're skipping under mangroves then you can just just skin hook the hook point and now you're super weedless but uh but yeah that's one thing a lot of people miss out on is that these mulligan paddle tails they're great as paddle tails for especially for buzz in the shallow water when the water's really not very clear or the water's really churned up but when it's bright out like this, especially when the sun's up and the water's clear, trout in particular just absolutely love the dark style of this lure. All right, so we have a lot of these birds around us. So we're just gonna go ahead and stop. If we catch a fish, the birds will probably eat it. And so as far as overall conclusion, both lures proved to work. Both colors, the Slam Shady had a, a quick start. It was three nothing, which is rare. And, but this, this, uh, this Fred came back and ended up being four to three. So four to three seemed like snook we're gravitating toward the slam shady. And then once we got onto the, on the deeper water, on the flats, the trout and jack seemed to like the, the fret. But in both cases, they both worked. Most importantly, what pretty much all of these tests have shown is that it's all about getting yourself at the right spot at the right time. Get yourself in the feeding zones. And as long as you're using a lure that has good depth control, where you can get that lure at the proper depth, or live bait for that matter, at the proper depth where the fish are feeding, you're gonna be catching fish. So if you need help with that, that's what our online fishing club is all about. It's called the Salt Strong Insider Club. We have proprietary software to make sure that you put yourself at the right spot, the right time actually highlights where the best bite is gonna be and tells you what time of the day the best bite should be. And this is specifically designed for inshore saltwater anglers, redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder. If you like those, those species, you're gonna love this club. Secondly, we have proprietary courses, so online courses that make sure that you maximize your results when you get there. It goes through the tackle you need to make sure you maximize results, lures, the selection of lures most importantly, and how to rig, how to retrieve, everything you could possibly need to know is in those courses. And thirdly, for all the gear is you can have huge savings on your tackle. We now have over 40,000 members, so we have a lot of great group discounts with a ton of different products. Most members now are saving more than their dues simply by just the, the gear that they're buying normally. So to learn more about that, just go to saltstorm.com. And as far as equipment, if you're curious about what I'm using, so it's the TFO Pro Rod. This is a 7.6 medium power rod. I have a 2500 Legalis, Daiwa Legalis. This is just a great all-purpose combo. And it's really not that expensive as far as bank for the buck. This thing is really nice. As far as line, I have Daiwa J-Braid on both. One is green, one is this, uh, this gray color. Both are 10 pounds. And then as far as leader goes, I have just Andy Mono. Regular Andy Mono, 20 pound Mono. Hook is the Haas Helix hook, the three yacht with the one eighth ounce weight. And then the soft plastics are the Mulligan. So this is the four inch Mulligan lure. Started as a paddle tail, ended as a jerk. Both situations caught a good amount of fish. So if you need any of this gear, it's all at fishstrong.com. And as an Inside Club member, you save 20% or more on everything we can't do that for reels anymore but we do offer free line free spooling of the line and we'll ship it to you free of charge as a member again fishstrong.com for that if you have any questions about this test or if you'd like to see other colors tested please leave a comment down below i'm really curious about about knowing exactly when each specific lure is at its optimal its optimal uh, performance and uh, so I'll be doing a lot more tests. I'll be curious to know which ones we're gonna do. I'm gonna do Fred for now, and I'll start on Gold Digger, and then we have multiple other colors to try out as well. So help me know which one you wanna see. Comment down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon.